Oh, well, the last part of that spell was um, in kind and to be just wonderful for my father's mind. But <clears throat> thank you, nature. Thank you, nature. Thank you. Thank you to the Dominican Republic. Thank you to uh, the Ashtar Command and the Galactic Order. Thank you to all the celestial white knights, white sheets, white hats, and white out for helping us see and not see everything that is perfectly accommodating to the parasitical nature of our God. <laughs> Quiet now. We're going to go to Christmas forest. Oh, I see Christmas forest. And that is a place you can go, I take it. It is a place I can go. You come to Cindy. Okay, just quickly. I don't have a lot of time. But... I don't really know how to get there. I sort of just feel my way there every time I go. Sure. Oh. <laughs> oh, deer droppings, fresh. I can't say it's thanks to the deer that I can wander here. Okay. Now I'm pretty sure I know where I am. In case I... Haven't made it clear in case I haven't made it clear. Oh, in case I haven't made it clear. In case I haven't made it clear. In case I haven't made it clear. This is the giant holly tree behind Christmas forest. It's the forest in a place.
there's a lot of narcissists, although it's not always certain if this is happening because they're often so charming, but the less charming ones is more obvious that they're, they turn a lack of respect for personal space into, uh, or just anything personal, into a special ability. You know, it's a sign that they're feeding off of you. They feed off of you sometimes from the moment they meet you. You know? And that, in that sociopaths or narcissists will often initiate and then repeat things that just happen to be humiliating to you over and over. Doing that, which is really something that says like something's wrong, but it's also protected as a special ability they have, a part of their personality, a part of who they are. To question it would be inappropriate, impertinent, would arouse their potential fixations upon you. It's like a lot of white people behave like they're drunk when they're sober. A narcissist is like a sober drunk person. There's a mortification that's been turned into a special ability. An inhibition that's turned into a provision for their own survival in a way that can accept anyone else's personal space and survival. And almost needs to. To fail to object to it is to tacitly consent to it. And to object to it is to make it worse. So what it's, it's basically the energy of someone's brain who is in prison. It becomes like a prison that they put around you. They suck the oxygen around you. They take the breath away. They put words in your mouth. You know? I don't know how many times I've been looking at something in nature and a white person comes up and puts words in my mouth. Yeah, that's pretty messed up or something. It's like, and then assume that they've made some sort of happy accord with you. Or even... Got to see a bald eagle too. And then it could be years once they insinuate themselves and over and over again. It's amazing how many of the comments they make when they come up to me are about dismissing life. Ways of making it look like psych psychopaths want to look like they're actually feeling people. But they tell you things that seem oddly asentimental and unfeeling. Unsolicited advice about how to just, like, that's just life, let it go, you know, get over it. There's something very peremptory. Uh, something of an indulgent religious prerogative in how they mean to show that uh, to affect their personality to affect the rapport to disarm their prey um, and what can all happen while you're just standing there saying absolutely nothing and no one ever says pardon me or excuse me or thank you for your time or I hope I'm not disturbing you It's like God woke up today, he didn't create anything. He just made, he destroyed the world into something where everyone just gets forced into a role they don't want to play. And all the roles have been decided and all the wars and all the games and all the basketball games have already been decided by God. He wins. Everyone gets to be dead. Instead of a sacred place having the ring of grace, life is meant to have the ring of death. I had a bit of a headache today. Usually, I did pass by a usually psychopathic female, but she didn't seem, usually, like, her eye contact was healthier today. And I think I already had a headache before I met her, but, you know, it's a problem. That's the second time now in a week and a half that I've been around the vicinity of this particular person and, and gotten a headache. Um, 
Not good. There's a creepy man that came up to me today. That's headache inducing in itself. Men don't usually give me headaches, but I guess anyone with blood disorders. I have no idea why a strange man would come up to someone in the darkness on the beach. I would think of all places as a place people go to be alone. It's ridiculous. That's why like psychopaths just come up to you at odd times. Like I've said, psychopaths I've lived around, or white people who've squatted in my houses, they really try. You think they're expressing themselves, maybe, or they're trying to get to know you, or they paint a picture of you, like with a tear coming out of your eye. But they're really just trying to talk about themselves. These are the products of digesting you and turning it into themselves. You in terms of themselves. And, you, know, you in terms of themselves. And how they're learning to be more human from their prey. Adapting to try to learn how to look like they feel things about people, which they don't. About people's personal properties. So they do learn to talk like, I care and I'm spiritual and this or this. And, oh, I've, ooh, la. And the more someone talks, the more they seem to need to prove who they are isn't kind of honestly learned trait of white people. It's a compulsion to earn your place in reality as a real person. Maybe a way to affect a kind of intellectual power or dignity in ways that might not otherwise be able to do, adapted to politics or the spiritual jargon of the time or place. To be a part of something where you can automatically have an opinion and be somebody. It's not the same, you know, and, and uh, you might realize I've been around white psychopaths and there's an, an earnestness to this, but what else is being learned? What's, what's being lost with this, this new ability? Well, a certain thing that makes us human, I think. The more you're performing and the more you need to do something like this, the more you're going to eliminate and humiliate real parts of other people. In fact, anyone who joins in this kind of raucous uh, jargonese, this jargon-like accord, are really actors on a stage. They're really stepping out of themselves, and they're all healing from being uh, taken out of themselves. You're meant to go out of yourself willingly, uh, because the world has already taken you out of yourself. You know, life is a go out of your comfort zone, become someone else kind of place. That's torture in itself, but work is torture and you have to learn to accept torture and then find who you can be that can now go beyond that and find some new pleasures as an adult. It's a good way to make sexual predators, salesmen, Christian ministers, you know, someone capable of doing and, and uh, with impunity, basically any crime in the Western world. And this is love, and this is who I am, and spiritual, yeah, yeah, I want to. And it's fine, I guess, people enjoy that type of thing. There's really no love in it. But there's a lot of belief. Humans have energy, you know? And we can make things that feel loving out of our belief and our faith and our good intentions, you know. There's goodness in that. But then there's problems with that. That's what Terrell studied when he studied cults. It's like everyone wants to make good off the cult or the group, but then there's all these other problems. There's all these other problems. Hey, we, we want to do communism, but there's all these other problems. We want to live heaven on earth, but there's all these problems. What are all these other problems? rich white people that own property in the area, both of them psychopaths, you know, hardworking psychopaths from psychopathic families, 
and go to a psychic, the psychic tells them that one day you're going to have a beautiful property with horses, and then one day, well, it turns out they're looking for a property with horses, so, and you can buy them in the area, and they buy a property with horses, and oh, well, you found your ultimate property. They eventually get divorced. When my mom goes to a psychic, they tell her that her dad, who died in 1986, is still in traction and is not available to talk to her because he's such a bad person. It's amazing. Psychics, you know, wanted to get a go at me even when I wasn't paying them. When I went to different New Age stores, it was between 19 and fucking 50. Oh, you got things to say. Ooh, you were born with trauma. Ooh, cesarean sections are more likely to commit crimes. I mean, they've got all this spiritual bullshit, you know? White people can, and some of it's accurate in the sense that it might be generally accurate to anyone, or I have an interest in birth trauma. Like, you know, they said, oh, you were afraid to be born. Oh, unlike everyone else in human history, what about Jews born in 1901 in Warsaw, for Christ's sake? How can we, have you deprived them of being afraid to be born? Why just me? Oh, and I happen to be Jewish. It means that every trauma in your life, right, was already talking to your mother's womb, or whatever was talking to you, you are afraid for erroneous reasons in a way like all psychology is just about you and your brain and the way your spirit is and what you need to learn. <laughs> Which one do you think they would agree with? I mean, they're psychopaths, they're sexual predators. Anyone can pull things out of an energy field, right? I uh, threw out my shoulder one day dealing with the psychopaths that live around me and I went around this narcissist and he started talking about sex and being creepy because he has mental problems. He lives in his van. And then um, once he settled down and where he wanted to sit, another psychopath, the lady I saw today, walked by and stared at me. This is my life, you know, and I've never sat on the beach with anyone before and I'm getting stalked by people. And, uh, you know, it just all goes by like life. Um, the first time I walked with my mom down the boardwalk this year, a white woman stalked me, you know, <laughs> who'd been stalking me here for six years. I think she's gone now. I think it was her way of saying goodbye just disgusting, disgusting people. You just want to get it out of your blood. They're so fucking violent. White people are so fucking violent and nobody sees it. And um, I say to him, to you as an object lesson, oh, look at these logs, aren't they interesting? And he starts talking about Grecian theories of fulcrums and leverage, because my shoulder went out, actually. I didn't tell him this, by the way. He didn't know I was hurt based on throwing it out due to putting too much weight on the end of my arm and throwing it back. Sorry to mention, it's gruesome, and I've had to live with it for a lot of years. And um, he's talking about leverage and how they tried to approximate the best place to put something so you could get the most force for your force, you know, live for your force. And he's all very happy with himself because the only thing he's ever done is read books and bullshit about what he knows about anything. And I just happened to pick that log, and he just happened to, have to talk about leverage and fulcrums. It's fascinating. Very pertinent to the injury I had recently suffered. And so you can see, like, people who are mentally damaged themselves can pull things out of your energy field. That just shows that as animals, we're constantly giving and receiving information. The next question is not, are you psychic? But what information are you pulling out of me, and what is it good for? And is it good for me? That's how you find out. Not if someone's a psychic, psychic or not, if they're a narcissist. Right? The fact that any white person, high or low, pulls anything out of my energy field, especially the first time we meet, I'm not interested. You're a parasite. What's the point? Yeah, it's weird, eh? I gotta get going. I'm 44, I should get going. Okay. Let's go. Thank you to my dad. This is his one. I'll leave it here. Smoke too much weed.
Just good. The Flintstones, the Flintstones, the story, they're a lonely, they're a Montessori. So, what have you learned? White people can lie based on being true believers in things that have all the right words and all the right intentions about wishing the well-being, the love, the healing, the spiritual restoration, the peace of mind of anyone within their confidence. Right? Check. Wonderful, beautiful, mm, yoga, diet, healing, mindfulness, everything is available with positive energy, everyone. Always positive, 24 hours a day. Oh, but sometimes we have emotions, don't we, people? <gasps> sometimes we get, a, we get the boo-hoos and we get a little angry. That's only natural. <laughs> Every spirit develops a little bit of anger from time to time, and we get the boo-hoos. <laughs> It doesn't have anything to do with anything that Rain Griffin talks about, because he's crazy. We really care about you. <laughs> or, Rain Griffin says that only your mom and dad can really care about you, because that's why you care about them the most. <laughs> right? Because like, that's the most important love there is. Why would anyone want to ape or replace that, and why would anyone need them to? <laughs> without even have anyone having to say anything explicit about what and why and how okay it is, no matter what anyone does to you. <laughs> it's like, oh, how, how all-consoling that must be. <laughs> unless you spell it out out. Unless you spell it all out for free. <laughs> spell it all out for free. Spell it all out for free. White people are crazy. They, don't, they can't help anyone with anything. They can't even help themselves. Let's walk through the forest. Eh? We'll try to take a brisk pace, which I don't recommend. <coughs> you might watch me fall. Try to pick up the deer trails as we go along, heading uh, south. Inch you can be good to you, but you've got to pick up your feet. So I won't get the full day I usually get. But let's go this way. But I get to see my mom. And uh, listen to those birds, eh? actually going to Christmas forest this way at some point. This way. This is getting a little hairy. It's good with my deer droppings. Yeah.
Do one right on time. Okay. Hmm. I speak of the most purulent parts of our lives as social creatures. You know, it's hard not because it doesn't exist, but because it's everywhere. It's like you start to find out that unseen mesmer that is prone to touch and here to possess the human mind uh, against its own better nature and that allows us to do and say and remove from this world things that impugn the very safety of the very peace and health which everyone claims to, to want and need but we can't just say it in name it's not just words right nothing no family is worth it if it's just a word no love is worth it if it's just a word of course as humans we have to explore what everything that's important to us really means right and no one gets least choice in how they are treated and no one gets the least consideration in the proportions of unwanted harm than a child that is my feeling and since we are all children, at least at some point, and exceeds, and since it has the most sacred organs that we might wish to reflect upon for the rest of our lives, if we are to ever be truly healthy and to make such labor sound as our kindest to those whom we may learn to love and honor the way they and we have always deserved. And then, where will that take us? What road? Can we now walk along together, father and son? You know, a happy walk, father. I would go for a joyful walk with thee any day. If you're not too indisposed in the ICU. Okay. Well, my headache seems to have received it a little bit. There are some all too familiar experiences when I get headaches. So, yeah, I don't like that. That's weight here, I guess. I've been here so many times. You know, down these trails. Call that the chickadee. <laughs> Here's the what's called the common golden eye. <laughs> wow, Vizzy, you can help us protect this rare ecosystem by <laughs> staying on designated trails, <laughs> leaving trees, shrubs, and flowers undamaged for others to enjoy, <laughs> and keeping your pets on a leash and away from sensitive feeding areas. The white people control those. <laughs> Staying informed. You know, it's funny. I've been in sensitive feeding areas, and the only thing that ever fed on me, who was a sensitive being, was a retired, self confessed white school teacher and environmental enthusiast. And you can, just like this morning, you just know they're coming. Staying informed and follow their direction. Also follow the white people's direction when they need to 
uh, wage an insurrection against your personal space. Yeah. So I mean, the white people feed too. You know, intersecting with their one of their feeding grounds, which is you might say any place where white people go. <laughs> okay. So my mom's here, and now I have to go. I am, you know, look me up before you go go. Hey yo yo, look me up before you go go.